welcome back to the 1313 podcast, the most mediocre Ooh. podcast in the Star Wars universe. I'm Poe Dameron. That's Captain Rex. That's Boba Fett. Boba and today Fett. we are joined by Under the Helmet Podcast. podcast. Yeah, for anybody who's visiting from our channel, Eli couldn't make it today. He had he's been so stressed out and tired from work, so he's he took he took the night off. But he'll be back on our our episode Tuesdays and Thursdays. So we stream Tuesdays Thursdays. Thoughts and prayers yeah. for Eli. Thoughts it's and facts, prayers for facts. Eli. Yep. All right. He's doing all right. He just had a long day. He's tired. For those of you who don't know, this is our Habit Chat series. In our Habit Chat series, we invite other creators and members of the Star Wars community onto the show to talk about their experience with Star Wars. And then, you never guess what we do next. We have, we a, have chat. a chat. Yeah. So, again, Dylan, representing Under the Helmet podcast today. Dylan, tell us a little bit about your podcast content. Okay, so we do a little bit of everything. We're kind of where you guys are more focused on just Star Wars. We're a little bit more like fandom in general. So we're talk like for right now. We've got a series every Thursday night. We're talking about we call it Moon Night, where we're talking about with an N. Yeah, we're clever <laughs> like that. But yeah, we're talking about the new Marvel show Moon Night. We have a guest coming on really soon, which I believe when this episode comes up, that episode will have aired. But we're talking with somebody who w- went on the Galactic Star Cruiser. Ooh, that's our next that's our next streaming coming so that's going to be a really good one i'm excited for that and we just talk about you know marvel dc star wars whichever kind of like whatever floats our boat we're kind of interested in a little bit of everything we've done episodes on star wars rebels why star wars is more than just the movies we've also talked like who's the best person to carry the mantle as robin you know we're bit we're both big dc guys we had a had a had a little uh little verbal spat over that one but Huh. End of the day, we're all happy. Huh. It's Red Hood. If you had to ask, Red Hood is the best Robin. Oh. Eli would vehemently disagree, but he's not here to defend his point. So I automatically <laughs> win by default. Winning by That's default awesome. is still winning. So for those who don't know, we were actually on Under the Helmet. It was probably, I want to say like a month ago now. It was, it was a little yeah, bit it was ago. Not, it, was a, it was a little while ago. We were definitely a lot smaller of a, of a page back then. So we, we've kind of grown a little bit, had, had a little bit of growth. So it's good. that's all I yeah. It's definitely been, a, it's de- I feel like it's been a forever because you're a member in our Discord. So we talk to you all the time. But like, I feel like this like actual interaction, we don't get uh, too often. Yeah, too much of. So uh, yeah, so I guess... We'll just get into your personal experience with the franchise. What, like, when did you get into Star Wars? What got you into Star Wars? Um, how did it all begin? So, um, so, so to quote uh, a Cassian from from Rogue One, I've I've been in this fight since I was six years old. But I've been in this fight since as long as I could remember. So, um, I when I was when I was like two, my grand my parents moved to the same town. My grandparents owned a bed and breakfast bed and breakfast in and so they could I could be closer to them and we you know I used to spend a lot of time with them and I used to love the wiggles that was my thing I used to listen watch it all the time but my grandmother and grandfather got sick of the wiggles so one day they said hey you you need to watch get a get a load of this and put I believe it was a new hope I'm I guess it was a new hope I don't even remember which one it was, but they put it up. So Star Wars has been a part of my life literally longer than I can remember. Hmm, nice. That's awesome. So what growing up, what movie um, was your favorite or what was your favorite trilogy growing up? So I grew up probably right at around the height of the Clone Wars. So, so like I used to watch Clone Wars on TV on like Friday nights. So yeah. for me, it was always like the prequel trilogy, you know, Anakin, Obi Wan, Ahsoka, Padme, all that. Those are like some of my favorite characters and some of my favorite parts of Star Wars are in Clone Wars. I love the originals. I love the sequels. But when it comes down to it, I'm, I'm a prequel guy through and through. That's fair. And, and then the memes just make it better. Oh. Repeat that last part. I said, I said the, the prequel memes just, just solidified it for me, it made it better. Yeah. That's the best part. I'm going to keep it real with you. There's there's some memes that I'm kind of like, that I kind of cringe at now. Like the whole, I'm going to be honest, like the Anakin Sand one. You have to say it tastefully. Like I feel like people who don't know anything about Star Wars. It's rough. It's cool. Sand. And I'm just everywhere. But if you're like a Star Wars fan and you say it, I feel like it's different. Mm. You know? 
Um, other thing, do you remember? I don't know if anyone remembers this. Back when the Clone Wars aired on Cartoon Network, it was like season one and season two. They'd have this like graphic that would play right before the commercial break, and it would be a guy, and it'd be like the Cartoon Network logo like sliding through this gold tube, and it would be like yes! Star Wars, the Clone Wars. Will be yes, right <laughs> I do. I do remember that so much. <laughs> and what always got me was about the Clone Wars was how like when you watch that show, everybody in your family could like relate to a character. Like my little sister used to love Ahsoka. I used to always love Obi-Wan. My parents always enjoyed it too. So it was, it wasn't just like for one person, like the whole family could sit down and watch that show. And then I wanted to hit on the, the, the sand jokes for a second. I actually used yeah. that line on somebody and they didn't recognize it. And it was great. Yeah. I got to go. I, I went through the whole like monologue and she just didn't understand what was going on because we were on this conversation about like the beach and she was just like, she was like, yeah, you know, I, I and I used to work as a beach lifeguard. So oh, I, I genuinely <laughs> like I enjoy the beach, but sand does bother me. Like like the feeling <laughs> of sand genuinely does bother me. So I do relate to Anakin on that front. But it's like so I said that I was like. She was like, yeah, so so what was it like working on the beach? She's like, well, I developed a very strong distaste for sand. And she was like, well, why don't you like sand? I said, well, I don't like sand because it's coarse, rough, irritating, and it just it gets everywhere. And she was like, oh, yeah, that's nice. That kind of makes sense. And I was like, yep, she ain't the one. Was that a female that you were that you were like seeking out, or was that like a? Yeah, she ain't the one. That was long. Yeah, yeah. 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 keep it a buck with the boss. She wasn't a Star Wars fan. She immediately got kicked to the curb. She was like, "Bye." Talking about anything Star Wars is usually a can of repellent. You go, and they're like, "Oh, you like Star Wars?" Never mind. When God was making man, He said there's certain attributes, you know, <laughs> that should attract other people. But for the man, if you like Star Wars, that's a repellent of everything. <laughs> that's what I like to joke about. Absolutely, um, no, and that's that's um. So I, I, as you can see behind me, I've got my got my Lego collection. Yeah. And um, one of my one of my friends, you know, he, he's looking out for me, but he but he kind of sat at, sat down next to me one day. He's like, dude, so what are you gonna do if you like bring a girl over and she like sees your lego collection like what are you gonna say this is what you do this is what you do this is what you do mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's gonna be something along those lines it's like like yeah this is my collection like what's up like i'm not secretive uh, about it i'm not gonna hide what i like and what i enjoy it's not like you're doing the thing. exactly i i don't have any money to spend on drugs i'm too busy buying well, lightsabers and legos back, and well, back. all kinds of other stuff and you know what? If you like Lego, just get her something that she likes Lego. That's what I did. I got something yeah. Star Wars and I got my girl something Harry Potter. So it worked out. There you go. And you know, I'm going to keep it real with you. I, I know I told this to Lightsaber Radio when we had them on our show. Um, shout out Lightsaber Radio. Um, but uh, I told this story. I was like, I had my, my roommates and I were having the same discussion. And there was one time I did have a girl over at, at the apartment. And my whole bedroom is was all Star Wars stuff where I was living at the time. And uh, I remember I had this girl over and I was like, we're not going to my room. We're just going to stay out here, like eat some food, like watch some TV, like whatever in the living room. We're not going to my room. She's like, why? I'm like, we're just not. So I went into my room to like grab a sweatshirt or something. And she just like spawned into the doorway. And then oh, she just, no. she like looks around. She goes, what's all this? Oh. And I was like, Oh no! That's my Star Wars collection. <laughs> Needless to say, it didn't work out. But that's her loss, not mine. Exactly. Uh, got my money yep. up, made my funny up. Exactly. And like, and the thing is, like, people are, are so concerned about, like, you know, when it comes to like the idea of like fitting in. And like, I grew up in a small town where like that was the whole like everybody had to like fit this certain mold, mm -hmm. or you were like one of the weird ones. And I spent so much time trying to like fit into that mold of the town like i was always unique but i tried to fit that mold as best i could to like you know stay under the radar and like not gather attention and now i'm just like whatever i like star wars it is what it is i want to get a star wars tattoo like i quite literally want to get what's it the jedi order symbol right here and i know how a lot of people do the the basic dude like like on the bicep like tattoo like right there yeah I want to get like do or do not. There is no try tattooed right there. 
because I feel like that's oh. something that actually means a lot to me. Jackson's like, getting a tattoo on his bicep uh, as well. Which one are well? I you're was, planning on it. Planning on it. Know. I don't think I'll end up doing it soon, but I wanted to get like a wrap of a Twi'lek saying Nara. Hey, that was my idea. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That'll be really cool. Because I wanted to do one for Jacob, and I thought about doing uh, Obi Wan's lightsaber because we really liked Obi Wan and Anakin. And the more kind of like stop showing me, Jacob keeps showing us pictures of monkeys. So if we're laughing, that's why it's not a human. <laughs> that's amazing. But um, I want to do something for him, and then I just didn't end up liking the lightsaber idea. And Nero was my original idea for it. So, mm -hmm. and his initial placement for it was going down the bicep, and all I could think about is in the Scooby-Doo goes to the Himalayas movie when Shaggy gets that tattoo of a mouth eating a hot dog right here. He goes, like when I flex, it looks like it's chewing. So I, I, that's all I could think of when Jags was like, I'm going to get it right there. I was like, uh-uh, do not. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen a bunch of people. I actually had a, had a teacher in high school that had a that had one of those tattoos like right here. So that I kind of got the idea from him. And it was, um, he was a big history buff. So he it was a oh. quote from, I think, like, a Roman dictator or something. I don't even remember. I was like, whatever. It, it, I got the idea. And then I saw another friend who um, I just, I used to work with had, um, why do we fall so we can get back up again from the dark night on her, on her biceps. I was like, Oh, that's really cool. That kind of like reignited that idea for me. So. Nice, nice dude. I, um, I'm sure, you know, I have my uh, J guys for captain Rex on my shoulder um tattooed in like it's a very nice like blue and so my plan is down the road to get like a nice sleeve that goes all the way down um i'm lucky enough that i'm going to be going into a profession that like allows tattoos i know that that really sucks for some people um where their profession doesn't allow that but for me i got lucky enough so um i kind of want to do like clones up at the top near like you know the bicep and the shoulder because i already have the j guys and then maybe something like first order down here i don't know i have so many ideas but um i did want to hit on the point you made too about like the fitting in thing mm -hmm. that is definitely and we're from like a i would say like a medium-sized city yeah as opposed to um like a small town it's called a city but really it's just a pile of garbage <laughs> wrong but uh <laughs> but we uh I know that growing up, Star Wars, it was like, I always was into like, you know, pop culture, whether it was Indiana Jones or like when I was a small child, like Bakugan, Beyblades, Skylanders. If anybody knows Skylanders out there, you already know. In middle That's school, cool. my nickname was Skylander Tom. That's what everyone bullied me as. Um, and so uh, I just, I don't know. I always grappled with like how I would, how open I would be about um, liking that kind of stuff. And then as I got older and as I became more comfortable with who I am as a person, I got like more and more okay with the idea of like, I just don't care about other people's opinions when it comes to that. If I love it and I'm that into it, I'm that passionate about it. Um, that'd be my advice to any young person out there is just, if you're passionate about something and you know, you are just worried about what other people are going to say about it, you have to believe in yourself enough and have the fortitude to just go forward with your passion because... unless your passion is drugs and don't do that unless your passion is drugs or furries yeah. we won't support that yeah but yeah so we're kind of we're kind of in the kind of in the same boat with that where it was just you know i i remember like so so you guys i know you guys do rotc in college i did jrtc in high school and decided to not follow that yeah. follow that track any further and but that's okay yeah and and, and the, like it was crazy so like and that was always my intention like i like I would go through like phases where I'd be like, I want to join the military. And then my mom would be like, do you really? And I'm kind of just like, maybe. And then it was just like, no, like it was, it was very much that like, you know, in that, you, you know, you get in that mindset that is that esprit de corps where you're just kind of like, you've got everybody who's like gung ho about it. And you're like, well, shoot, I want to be gung ho too. Like, like I want to go in the Marines. And they're all just like, you wouldn't make it. I'm like, how do you know that? Like I can do it. Prove myself. Hey, no, no. Hey, literally okay, Jacob. five of my best friends went in straight out of high school and mm -hmm. I'm trying to think how many of them are still in now. Um, what, and I think there's three that I know that are still in right now. One of them is a reservist. Yes. One of them, we don't even know where he is. <laughs> hey, like, like, that, though. like dude just disappeared. So, so, so Aaron, if you're, if you're watching this for any reason, Aaron, mm -hmm. if you see this, bro, 
Like, text the group chat back, please. We miss you. Where you at? Yeah, where you at? Where you at, Jonesy? Where you at? Also, man? Feel like that's funny as well because I very much joke that Jared TC is the club for social rejects as a social reject in high school. <laughs> we, we were. I, I can agree with that. I it's 100% most, agree with that. In my opinion, it's just the most cringe thing ever. It really we were the is. coolest and players like, in school. I want to give back to my program and like go back to help like talk to them about like doing ROTC if that's like something for them in the future, like helping them out with future careers because I know a bunch of them still. But like, I, it's hard to bring myself to do it because I'm like it. It's just cringe. It's so. <laughs> Jacob showed me a really, you know, Jacob share your picture with there the class. Go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, the ROTC kid. So yeah, um, I I was I mean I was in it like I I don't want to say I was like like I was very much drinking the Kool Aid back in high school like I had a buzz cut <laughs> majority of high school. That's like, my, I'm gonna find a photo. Let me go. Let me go find a photo on my on my personal Insta real quick. Um, Mine's so anybody if you if reason. anybody sees it, I'm gonna try to block it out. But while, if anybody sees my personal, while we're searching for those though, don't I have follow a, me on my personal. I I won't accept it. I have a private account for a reason. <laughs> I have a little bit of a story, though, because you mentioned the, the Marines. So over the past week, Jackson and I went on a little trip to, oh my a, big, gosh, to a big city to go see my favorite band, Ice Nine Kills. Now, on our way there, we stopped at a get-go so I could use the bathroom. I do my business, and I'm washing my hands. As I'm washing my hands, a Marine recruiter enters the bathroom, takes two steps, Turns around, looks at me, goes, I'm sorry, man. This is a bit weird because we're in a bathroom, but you have a really nice physique. Have you ever thought about joining the Marines? And I just turned him baffled. And I went, oh, yes, the bone structure, the complexion. I was like, I mean, I, muscles. I'm like, oh, that is, that is no kind of that is kinda how they get you. Yeah, this oh, was this no was um recruited in a gas station bathroom. Nah, let me let me get him right here. No, dude, this, this was me in high school, and, and I, w- I became the uh, – I was our our supply officer, so that that definitely solidified the whole me not wanting to join. After that, yeah, that's me. And my oh, uh, we were army. Yeah, we were Navy. We're Navy guys. Oh, oh Navy! I got yeah, we were Navy, Navy, but our our head instructor was a Marine. We were army. I was yeah. battalion commander, so I look like a dictator. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah, I was um. <sighs> Okay, but yeah, this was me just outside, generic guy holding a fish picture. But um, <laughs> the buzz bro, cut that's how it was real. though. Okay, so fish the, the, the buzz cut was real. Don't show. I have literally haven't been fishing hey, since. Man, that no disrespect taken. in it. We all made decisions when we were in high school that, that we, we regret. What's happening? I said, what happened? Oh, I'm not. No, like everything cut out, and now we're all here again. Okay, I'm not streaming on Twitch this time, so I'm not sure what's going on. My internet is fine right now. I literally have everything <laughs> off. No, it's, it's not me this time. It's probably our end. Yeah. Tell, tell, uh, all right, all right. We're chilling, we're chilling. We're chilling. All right. So, Dylan, I got to know. Yeah. I have to know. Uh, how excited are you for Obi-Wan Kenobi? And what are you most excited for going into the show? Okay, so I'm excited for – so I'm, I'm very excited for Kenobi. He has been my favorite character for as long as I can remember. Like, when I was a kid, like, I can relate to Anakin, I can relate to Luke, but Obi-Wan was always my favorite. Just something about Obi-Wan just always, like, drew me to him. It was probably the accent, honestly. The accent. Oh, the... my Lord. Oh, oh, here we go. Oh, Oh, no. You want to yeah, they're all frozen. You're doing that. I see. I see frozen faces. Oh, no. but... We're back. Right, you guys We're back. Okay. okay. Sorry. I heard you say you could relate to Anakin. You could relate to Luke. But Obi. But yeah. But Obi Wan was always my favorite. And I mean, just yeah. his like, I don't know, his demeanor, his like swagger, the way he carries himself, even with like, you know, what one of one of his one of my favorite lines from him is the one in Clone Wars where he says to Maul. You know, right before he absolutely gay men's the love of his life, where he, where, you know, he's, he said, you know, you can kill me, but you can never destroy me. It takes strength to resist the dark side. Only the weak embrace it. There's something about that line, just like, yep, I relate to that. I relate to that so much, and that 
characters. So I'm very excited for the show. So I, it's definitely hard because like I used to be the type of fan that would keep up with all the news and all the rumors and like, you know, all the leaks. And then I did that during the sequel era. And then I kind of just learned, yeah, I'm, I'm painting this unrealistic picture of what's going to happen. Yeah. And it's just like, and then, and then Luke's going to show up and he's going to like be yanking Star Destroyers out of the sky with the force. And it's just, it's unrealistic. Because the higher you set your expectations, the more likely you are to get them like ruined. Especially with, you know, and we see how passionate Star Wars fans can get. Like, exactly. Yeah. Their Star Wars discourse on TikTok is especially rough. I've, um, I've been experiencing that. I had a few videos that got kind of, that got kind of big and they, the discourse under it was very, um, very toxic and kind of divisive. And I kind of fell into that hole of like, well, shoot, I'm going to fight them all. And then I finally just said, you know what? It's not worth it at the end of the nope. day. Yeah, I think, and I agree with you about the leak thing because we, yeah. <clears throat> I've never been somebody who goes out of my way to see leaks. Um, but now like, and I'm sure you know what we're talking about. Once you're like a content creator, it either just shows up on your recommended, um, like on our YouTube channel like almost always the first thing on the recommended is like a leak from an upcoming project, whether it be star Wars, Marvel, whatever. Um, or like you have people that are going, Hey, have you seen this? And then it's yeah. a leak. And so we have some of our friends like in our inner circle that are like, Oh, like, do you want to see a leak from the show? And I'm yeah. always like, no, nope. I don't, I don't. Not a big leak. Person. I had part of Kenobi spoiled for me on TikTok today. Yeah. If it's, if it's what I think it is, I saw it too. Yeah. I, I didn't. Yep. Follow. Yep. I, I saw that. I was like, man. That. I'm like, so cool. I wish. I, I like. I saw it. And I swiped past as fast as I, I did too. I I did too. I actually closed my eyes and went back and like reported the account. Dang. It's just. I just think it's like. Yes, it's cool because oh, you get the internet clout because you showed off this thing before it came out. But I hate it. I don't want to. You're know ruining it. Yeah. Yeah. It's we're a month like a away. Spell. We're a month away from the premiere, and especially. Like TikTok, especially like I, I did some stu like studying up on like how the algorithms work on like TikTok and Instagram and stuff like that. And literally it's that feedback loop of you get what's tailored to your preferences, especially yeah. TikTok. TikTok's the worst offender of this where they just they bombard you with stuff you're going to like. So if you show them like, hey, I'm ex I'm excited for this Kenobi show. Like I made several posts about how excited I am for Kenobi. So, of course, they're going to show it to me. And I'm just like, mm, cool. I wish I didn't see that, though. Yeah. But what's good, though, is about I think the clip we both saw is that it's one of those things that it's ambiguous enough to be like, OK, is this what's really good. happening? Is it a force vision? Like, like what's what's about this? So there is that sort of like ambiguity there where you can kind of be like, OK, we don't know how real this scene is. But then again, it's always like, man, that sucks to see. Like, it would have been great to, like, see it for the first time and be like, like, um, have you all seen No Way Home? Yes. I'm yeah. assuming. Yeah. Okay. So, Actually, I haven't, but I had the whole movie spoiled for me, so. Okay, okay. So, spoiler, spoilers for No Way Home and coming. I actually, um, I have a viewer in, and, and, you know, I don't know how, but he literally said that, um, like, I posted a, a No Way Home meme the other day, even after, like, Sony had released all the all the pictures and like, you know, Marvel's released all the pictures. So it's like, OK, obviously people know like what happens in this movie. And like yeah. I said something about No Way Home and they were like, somebody mm -hmm. was like, dude, that's a spoiler. I'm like. Dude. Huh? At Say this that point, again? Say that last part again. Sorry. Yeah, I said I said so. Um. So what did what you say to him? He's because he was like that. All I heard was that he said that was all I heard was it. He was like he was like it's a spoiler, and I'm like, dude, it's it's March. The movie came out in mid December. Yeah. Like, at a at a certain point, and and no no disrespect to this guy because he's actually really cool, but he was I was like oh like I felt bad. I was like I'm so sorry. He was like it's all good. I've had the whole movie spoiled, but I just haven't seen it yet. I was like, what are you doing? It's on digital now. Yeah, see, like, if like, you go to www.123movies.com, you can get it absolutely for free. It's pirating. 
Well, yeah, one, two, three no. movies though doesn't have malware. Yeah, um, I, 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 I kind of copied your guys' bit where it's like every time we say or recommend something that might be kind of like morally dubious, I always like get up really close to the mic and say like, "Under the Helmet Podcast does not promote illegal activities." <laughs> <laughs> I stole that straight from you guys. I think that's hilarious. You're fine. I think it's uh, funny. He's stealing. He's stealing. I did it. I did it. I'll do it again. Stealing. Stealing. I loved it. I'm just. I'm just to do it again. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. I'm wait, 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 wait. All right. I'm just itching to do it again. <laughs> No, but I feel like the biggest thing that I agree with is that Rex and Ron says on Twitter that as soon as, like, say, like, Star Wars or Marvel posts about it, then it's okay to talk about online with people and be like, okay, yeah. this is no longer a spoiler if the people who created it posted about it. Like, when Marvel posted the picture of Toby, um, Andrew Garfield, and Tom Holland, it was like, okay, you can talk about that now because they really did expose that they're in the movie, you know? Absolutely. Like, I have a friend who, I'm not sure if he's seen it or not. So, like, I always try to, like, there was one time, I think, I can't remember, but I, like, had a No Way Home spoiler that I, like, been sitting on for, like, three weeks. And I was, like, dude, like, just mute. I know you don't, like, go to my Instagram that much, but just mute the page for, like, a couple days. It'll disappear in time, and you won't see it. And he was, like, I don't really care. I'm, like, I know, but here's the thing. That's going to be the one video you, like, that randomly pops up on your Instagram. And it's just gonna like you're just gonna be like, dude, it's a spoiler. I'm like, bro, I warned you. So like, I always try to warn people because I because some people really care about spoilers, some people don't. I always just try to be, you know, hey, heads up, there's a spoiler incoming. And that's why I try to watch it day one. Mm-hmm. Yep, day one when it comes out. Multiverse of Madness. Haven't bought the tickets yet. I'm gonna wing it, but I guarantee I'll find a seat. Yep, I gotta see that day one. Yeah, yeah got to because there's oh. gonna be spoilers. You got you actually have to um find a time machine, go into the future, watch the movie like two weeks in advance before it comes out, and then watch it again because literally it's gonna be spoiled like two weeks in advance. I just know future. it. Future, <laughs> literally. Future, like like that's what happened with um. I had yeah, that was my point. I was I was talking about No Way Home because um I got Daredevil spoiled. Because I'm a huge fan oh, of Marvel yeah, Netflix. Yeah. So, like, when... Well, now it's Disney Plus, I but... Watched it. Wait, 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 wait. You know what, careful what you say, because I'm on season two still. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I just got I it spoiled that he was in no way. That's the only thing spoiled. that got spoiled. I won't, I won't say anything further. But I got spoiled. I was like, oh, that's so cool. I wish I could have saw that in the theater. And, like... Yeah. Oh, okay. Talk about the show. But not the yeah. show movie. Pardon. Yeah. But, no, I definitely, I definitely lived in the whole... Um, Man, you guys are gonna be really pissed when when Toby and um, Andrew aren't in the movie. Because mm. like I had I had a friend who, and this is kind of an emotional story, so I I, I feel, feel kind of bad sharing it. But um, he 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 would tell you the same thing. But he is a huge Spider Man fan, and he um recently lost his father. Uh. And his father was a huge Spider Man fan as well, so he was like emotionally banking on those guys being in the movie, and I was like. Bro, I really hope they are for your sake. That would have been terrible if they weren't. I was like, I really hope, like, because he said to me, he's like, they're gonna be in the movie. They're gonna be. I'm like, I'm like, hey, dude, I hope they are for you. I'm not gonna say they are because I haven't heard anything. I told, I told him, I was like, dude, I try to keep my expectations low because I know better. Mm -hmm. Because I've I've been burned before. I'm not doing it again. Definitely good that they were in the I'd end. still be saying that I'm the, the only one on this planet that was calling Daredevil was going to be in the movie. Nobody was talking about it, but I was like, bro, it's going to happen. That was the only thing that I was like sure of. I was like, bro, it's going to happen. And then when it did, I was yeah, like, I, I was I was in denial of, of both. Um, what was it? Yeah, because Hawkeye came out that Wednesday, and then yeah. No Way Home was the next day. So when Kingpin showed up in Hawkeye, I was like, yeah. Because I, I was like, okay, the leak is true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, that was true. Good. All of it is true. <laughs> I thought Spider Man would have been in Hawkeye though, so I was kind of like, "But it is what it is." That would have been that would have been kind of interesting to see Spider Man like swinging a Hawkeye. Well, they at the very end of Spider Man, it's right where Hawkeye was happening, so That's it made tons of sense. Come on, Marvel, do better. All the Avengers sleeping when any conflict happens that one hero has to tackle. All the Avengers are sleeping while Moon Knight be doing his thing. 
All the Eternals and their flying Dorito sleeping while everything happens in the MCU. Day and night. The event, the Avenger, the Avengers are re- really, really sit and go. Man, it's, they check the phone. Oh, there's an explosion in uh, London. Oh, Thor's already handling that. We, we, we ain't worried about it. Oh, <laughs> Thor's there. Man, what am I gonna do? Thor's there. Captain America's blowing up DC. Ah, Black Widow's there. That's two Avengers. We're good. So that's actually, that's the fun of a shared universe. But at least they did the right thing and they killed off like Quicksilver. Because there'd be no excuse at that point. It's like Quicksilver exists. He could get you there like that. Now yeah. DC, on the other hand, oh. you got no excuse for like the Flash and Superman just not being in everything and Flash, anything. I hate the Flash. No more Flash. Flash I hate no Superman. more Flash. No Ezra more Flash. <laughs> Ezra Miller's on a villain arc right now. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Ezra Miller has canned his entire career. Warner Brothers has dropped him and said that they will never do another project with him. I hope no agency ever picks him up again. I hate The Flash. I hate Ezra Miller. I hate his face. I hope he never gets to see the screen again. I just don't care. I was I was a fan of Ezra's Flash. I, I much prefer the, the CW Flash. But I think this is a great opportunity to, if they're still going to even do Flashpoint. Because at this point, who knows? They've sunk so much money into it. It's kind of like, we'll see. Great time to bring in a different Flash that's not Barry Allen. Like, I don't know, Wally West? Ten times better character than Barry pre, um, pre-rebirth. Got it. Hmm. Yeah, I know, um, I know absolutely nothing about DC. I know the Dark Knight trilogy. I know Man of Steel. Um, I've seen... There will be a man. There will be a day that comes on our show where I talk Man of Steel and um, the Snyder movies. And uh, there's gonna I be some Man of Steel. People. I thought it was pretty good. There's gonna be some upset people when I talk Snyder movies because they're bad. In short, not a fan. But let's let's hop back on Star Wars. Let's hop back on Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. so, I'll on something recently though. Lego Star Wars came out. Have you played it? I have. So I have not played it because I currently don't own a gaming <laughs> system. But I want to. Dang. That's... I want to play it so bad. And, like, I know for a fact as soon as I can get a gaming system, I'm going to be picking that game. That's, that's going to be number one. Because especially with the news of Fallen Order 2 coming out eventually, Ooh. I got to get Ooh. on that. Ooh. What episode are you on right now, Jackson? Attack of the Clones. I just got to where Obi-Wan goes on Geonosis. I just finished episode three. Nice. Sorry, I have... I have... So you guys both started with prequels? Yeah. yeah. I don't That's have the game either. Originally. Tommy, Tommy dude, head. No, so here's um, where I'm at with it. I One, I am trying not to spend money if I don't absolutely have to. And same. two, I don't have – I literally – my schedule is so busy where I don't have any time to sit down and play video games. So because of that, I'm uh, – Tommy be like, guys, I'm not trying to spend money where I don't have, have to. Also, Tommy – Guys, this toy company just made a stormtrooper, but get this, he comes with a lightsaber. I have to get it. Hey, <laughs> that's, that's that's I, cool. I saw that video. I saw that video. Okay. Sergeant Creel does look pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. No, he looks banging, dude. He does. He does look pretty good. Oh. And then I was a fan of him in, in uh the comics where he beats the tar out of Luke multiple times mm-hmm. and teaches him kind of how to use a lightsaber. So I can't wait to see if they end up making anyone else from Scar Squadron, because that would be so cool. I hope they do. I I hope they show up in the Bad Batch. Yeah, if Scar Squadron's in the Bad Batch, imagine Task Force 99 versus Clone Force 99. That would be cool. cool. Well, and then Starkiller shows up. No. Oh, man. That's another one. Starkiller. Not a fan. Wow! Not a fan. Not a fan of Star Killer. Give so, this man an award. Here, here's why. Here's here's why. So I played Force Unleashed and Force Unleashed Two. That's nice. I enjoyed the games. Mm-hmm. I enjoy Star Killer's character, but I honestly think if the the games ended with Force Unleashed One, I'd be okay with that. Yeah, because Force Unleashed 2 is rushed out in under a year because they're like, guys, we need to cash in on what would what yeah. we just did. 
Yeah, that Force Unleashed 2 was very, very um, mid, to say the least. Well, yeah, that's why you just played the first game. Yeah, I, and I mean, I, I think my problem with Star Killer more relies around like the fans of Star Killer. Yep. Especially where they're just like, bro, like he's literally like the Goku of like Star Wars. With like, oh, yeah, they're not Star Killer. Star Killer Goku, pulled, a, pulled a Star Destroyer out of space. It's like, okay, first off, no, he didn't. You don't even know the games you claim to love so much. He didn't pull the Star Destroyer out of space. The Star Destroyer was already falling. He just guided it to where it didn't like smash everyone to death with the force. And he didn't even know if he could do it. And then afterwards, he's physically like exhausted. Like it's not as great as a strength feat as everybody says it is. Dang, that's actually like a really good point. People that like Star Killer are like Beatles fans. They shove it down your throat that it, they're the goat, but honestly, I despise the Beatles. Okay, I like the Beatles. No, but I hate the Beatles. Here, here's where I'm at though. Hear me out. With Star Killer, all this is what okay, this is my point. You have all these all these fanboys that are like Revan, Malgus, Star Killer. They're the best Star Wars ever. But guess what? They've only seen the trailers for the games. Everyone thinks Starkiller is so OP because he vaporizes some stormtroopers in one of the trailers for the game. Bro, you know absolutely nothing about the character. And then everyone's like, oh, man, they're not doing the Force right in these new shows. I'm like, because it's not how much destructive power can you have. It's about the mysticism of the Force. That's just me, though. That's me, though. Absolutely. And and the thing about Legends is that Legends went on for so long. After a while, you had to start doing things that were like, you know, sort of out of the box and have these like crazy powerhouse feats. Because if not, it would have gotten boring. Like, yep. you have to think about like characters like so ones I particularly I'm not really a big fan of is like, what's her name? Uh, Abeloth from the like New Jedi Order books. Not a mm. Avaloth. She she's creepy. I'll I'll give her that. She's creepy and she's powerful. But like, why? Like no, that's it's, all. Yeah, got. it's too op. Yeah, she's too op. And then you got like Darth Nihilus, who like swallows planets. And it's like, don't get me wrong, that's a cool like concept of a character. But at what point does like? So when does he stop? Like when does Nihilus stop? He just like up. Oh, he's full. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I eat two planets today. I'm gonna go take a nap. <laughs> it's like a KFC bucket, you can only eat one. <laughs> <laughs> if you make it through a whole KFC bucket, you're a different breed. Well, you're Darth Nihilus then. <laughs> you're, you're you're stronger than Darth Nihilus, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't really. I don't know. I think the characters are cool. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I think they look dope, and I would and. I'm not opposed to seeing them in Star Wars canon material. Like I would love to see them, how they look on screen and like a live action interpretation. But I think people need to come to grips with the idea that these characters power levels would have to be dumbed down so ridiculously yeah. that I think that people would be more upset and they'd feel like the, it was a disservice to the character because his, because their power levels are not nearly as, as high as they would be in the expanded universe so i'm okay with it though because absolutely i, I want to see star killer in bad batch no so, i want to see star killer in the bad batch because they're doing all these cloning experiments it just makes sense yeah. oh yeah no that would that would definitely be cool like i would love to see like an inquisitor star killer like that would be pretty cool Ooh. i'm not gonna lie that would be neat okay. i'll tell you what though i do like some legends material like i'm not opposed to legends like oh like, personally, my favorite book, my favorite Star Wars book is Kenobi, which is a Legends book. I like absolutely that love that book. It is a banger. Like, that was the entirety of my middle school. Like, I would just reread that book over and over again. Absolutely loved it. So, I'm not opposed to the Legends stories or Legends characters. And, like, don't get me wrong. I think it's cool that we have, like, a Tusken Raider Jedi. And, like, yeah. you know, like, a Hut Jedi. He's Sherrod Het. Yep. Well, well, there's actually two. There's actually two, oh, yeah. believe it or not. Because there's Sherrod, who's the father, and then Asherod, who is the son. I read I read that comic. That comic is really good. It's the one that takes place on um uh what is even peel species? Um oh gosh. Um Jeez. 
Uh, I, the, um, I'm blanking right now. It's on the tip of my t- Which one? The flavors are melting on my tongue. It's just like on the tip yeah, of my tongue right I, now, dude. I'm, um, I'm blanking right now. Normally, uh, I'm pretty the Lennox, good right? Lanik. Lanik. Yeah. Minecraft. Yeah. Lennox the Lanik. Um, he, uh, that it was the one where they go to his planet and there's like they're fighting all this like corruption and Mace Windu goes to now Hutta and like there's a hut who has half his face blown off and like that comic book is really really good but uh Asherad is in that one um yes and then uh so I love that one and I also love um I don't know if you ever read the Obi-Wan Kenobi uh comic book the um, canon one the legends one Okay, I have From not read the Legends one. They I know go to this like, Rod, I know he and Asherod fight. No, not that one. I'm talking about the one where it's literally they go to this planet. It's like a moon of uh, Naboo, and there were a bunch of Gungans there. And there's this like sickness that like gives them all these red bulbs Shadow on their body. Shadow no, not virus? the Shadow Virus. Um, uh, but then like Dirge shows up and like absolutely obliterates Obi Wan. Pretty crazy. I like yeah. that one, but like, and then there's like the Jedi Purge comics, the Dark Horse ones. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of legend stuff that I love. I just think they should keep doing what they're doing and little by little sprinkle in pieces of the expanded universe into canon because I think that people get confused like when they don't realize that none of that ever was canon. So the yeah. fact that they renamed it from the expanded universe to legends. I just think that they did it to make it more digestible for new fans. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, which were brought in by the newer, which were brought in by the sequels and, and the newer movies and the newer yeah. content. What I actually saw uh, it was a YouTube video, and it actually was the guy actually raised a pretty good point where what it wouldn't hurt to like continue legends. I think that would actually be pretty cool to continue like some legend stories where there were some where they were kind of left like like half finished and it would be really cool to see some of these legend stories like completed. And I think the fans of those stories would really enjoy that. Yeah. But I also see why Disney's like, no, we're going to focus entirely on Canon and yeah. then we're going to change things when we want to. I think there's, there's also the cool point that um, you also get stuff where like Timothy's on got the yes. chance to write six books about Thrawn because of how good heir to the empire was and that that trilogy that came out i want to say the late 80s or early 90s right with um heir to the empire uh yeah like that series of books like people loved thrawn so much that star wars was like hey dave filoni's trying to throw him in rebels do you want to write some books about him you know and that we're good Jackson. No, Jackson dropped his beverage. I'll go get some paper towels. Your oh, Honor, we please. Sleep it off the table. No. Just sleep it Jackson, off the you table. look it off the table first. No, I'm not going to do that. I was like, like, get the paper towels. <laughs> Angel slave. You can say please. Please. <laughs> but yeah, we definitely when it comes to like Thrawn, like so, so I didn't read the Thrawn trilogy before I saw him in Rebels. Rebels was my Same. first real exposure <laughs> to the character. So like, when people are like, oh my god, Rebels like nerf Thrawn, I'm like, not really. Like, no. not not in my opinion. Like, like I went back and like did like my research on Thrawn. So it's like, okay, like what does Thrawn do in Rebels? Like he deduces like the Rebels, he sees through their ruse, he finds out like Callus. You forget about place. his uh kryptonite lizard. Yeah. <laughs> like like oh him. oh no, he didn't have um the, the Yal Sarmi or whatever who were like so repel the force. No, like that, I, that's the only thing he didn't have. Like they brought Rook. Yeah. Not to mention it's, Rook. Rook's got hands. Like Rook is Rook, dope. Dude. I hate Rook. I like hate Rook with a passion. I can't stand Rook. At I don't all. like him, but I, you know, it's one of those those things where like I like that I don't like him. Yes. Yep. That's how like, I feel about him. Like he's a good villain because he's a villain that makes me hate him. Mm-hmm. yes and he's a he's a threat like i mean she, yeah he, yep. he beats the tar out of canaan he beats up zeb before zeb finally like beats him so it's yeah. good when you have like these that is oh we lost you this team dynamic especially 
Yeah. And then and then to see him get like humbled is a beautiful thing. Like yeah. where, where Zeb has to like have this this threat to overcome. Because Zeb didn't really have much to do in well well, he was in what was it, season two since like he and Callus became buddies. Like there was only so much yeah. that he did outside of like big muscle guy and like a couple jokes here and there. So and I'm a huge Rebels fan. I love Rebels. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. So so to, to see all the characters get such good treatment like from the show is a beautiful thing yeah i agree i saw you guys did an episode about rebels remembrance day yeah we um, did so um that that was one of those things where like we want to we both so lightsaber radio is doing a, a recap right now on rebels yeah, and that kind of yes. like inspired me i was and then you guys actually did an episode on it too and i was like that's a sign i gotta do we gotta do a rebels episode and eli was like yeah let's do it so we d- we did the episode on um, on rebels and it was just it was fun it was a really fun episode and I really enjoyed it really enjoyed that one yeah I um I do I do want to say like uh when we have like have a chat guests and stuff and like obviously we've already known you when we were on your podcast I try to keep up with um everyone's content that like with people that we have like uh done like collabs with. Um, and I just got to say, like, it gets like, I've never been on this side of it. When I was growing up, I always like wondered like, oh, I wonder what like, you know, YouTubers watch on YouTube and stuff like that. But now it's like, dude, like I, I know like Jackson used to tune in like to everything out of the basement did. And I would too. And like between like, just between like, I watch lightsaber radios podcast here and there. I'll watch your guys's podcast here and there. And I used to go out of my way to comment on like all the podcasts that i would watch and stuff and like cloud city conversations i watch a lot of his stuff but like i find myself one my schedule is just really busy right now so i'm sure like when it frees up over the summer like i'll be able to actually sit down and write a thoughtful comment but it's like so difficult to keep up with everybody's content because everyone makes so much stuff and so i kind of have to like pick and choose like in the morning when i'm getting ready for my day i'll just be like oh like what am i gonna put on this morning while i'm you know, shaving or eating breakfast or whatever I'm doing. Um, but yeah, absolutely. And I'm definitely kind of in the same boat. Like when it comes to like star Wars, like podcasts and stuff, like I watch you guys and lightsaber radio and like, like when I go to watch, like, even when it comes to like watching my own, like, I don't know if, uh, like if this sounds bad, but like after we do a live show, I always go back and like rewatch it. I do the but same I'll thing. I'll do it as I'm like getting ready for bed. Like, Cause I know for a fact, if I like look too long, I'm like, dude, I don't like the way my like, face looks. I'm like, why do I look like that? Like, it's definitely one of those things. It's just like, 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 bro, like I thought that impression sounded really funny and it does not. No, I do the same thing. Yep. We, we definitely pick ourselves apart. And then there's some times where it's like that, where I like, I'll watch a TikTok and I'll be like, man, I look really like bad in that one. And other times I'll watch one where it's just like, man, this is the funniest thing I ever made. And it flops. Yep. But that's 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 the joy of of content creation, the joy of the internet, and like, I like I can't. I was speaking to my parents about this a few weeks ago, and they were just like, "Oh, we just thought you wanted to like become an actor or something." I was like, "No, this is just something fun that I do." Yeah. And they're like, "Oh," and they're like, "I was like, you know, I might make money with it down the road, but who knows? Right now, it's just a fun little hobby that I do." And here's exactly. the thing, like, and I told them I was like, if I wanted to, I could stop tomorrow, and it wouldn't change a thing. Like yep. it's just something that I enjoy doing and that it's, it's, it's a hobby for me. It's something that keeps me, you know, kind of de-stressed cause I work, you know, two jobs. I live by my, you know, I live by myself in an apartment. So it's nice to have these conversations and like, like a day like today, today was one of my work from home days. So like you guys are some of the first humans I've interacted with. And if not after a while, I start to go crazy <laughs> where like literally like, I can't remember what it was. There was one night I was like in the middle of like filming TikToks and I was like, oh shoot, it's like almost 11 o'clock. I didn't check the mail today. And I was like waiting on a, like something to come in. Uh, and I was in like full Jedi gear. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, shoot. So I went out and checked the mail. And of course, everybody's walking their dogs at that hour too. So it was like, okay, stealth mode. <sighs> gotta, gotta creep around the neighborhood in my like Jedi <laughs> robes. The Labradoodle turns the corner you well that that was, that was the weirdest thing like this 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 one girl was like walking her um i, I say girl like she's not a like an adult but she was like walking her dog 
And all of a sudden, like, I'm just like, please don't turn around. Please don't turn around. Like, I'm walking the direction. I had my, like, my, like, hood on. I was like, like, this. Like, please don't turn around. Please don't turn around. Please don't turn around. I just kept walking. I tried to make as little noise as possible. I was like, please don't look at me. Uh, and Jacob and I are We do the, the exact opposite. Where yeah. at our work, we'll, yeah. like, we wear our Mando helmets into work. Like in the parking lot, like Tommy will wear his boba helmet while he drives sometimes. <laughs> like, you know, like a responsible motorist. But um <laughs> we'll wear That's them while skill. we do like orders and stuff and things like that. And people either love it or have no idea what's going on. And so I guess it kind of comes back to what we were talking about earlier with like, you know, being okay with yourself and like being comfortable with yourself. Like I I'm doing it because I think it's fun. Like if I walk around, if like one time Jacob and I went to target and we had our, I had my Boba helmet on, he had his Mando helmet on. And it was like, we were just having fun with it. And you'll get the people that like acknowledge it and think it's cool. And then you get the people that like give you a weird look and I, you know, that they're thinking something, but I just don't care. Like I'm enjoying myself. I'm Mm. having a good time and I'm uh, expressing one of my passions Mm. and one of my hobbies with people. So like I wore the, um, that Captain Rex helmet Tommy had on at the beginning of the episode, I was wearing that into Sam's Club one time. Um, this is during the height of COVID. So literally, I'm just pushing my cart, walking around, just like pushing my cart by my own business. And this old lady comes up to me. She goes, I like your Stormtrooper helmet. And I want to be like, um, actually, it's a clown trooper. No, it's just oh, my like, God. Just today, Jackson and I... Um, or no, just yesterday, I should say, Jacob and yeah, I had our helmets on. Sure. We walked into work with our helmets on, and I told the story today. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, right after we opened the store, a lady walked in, and she looks at me, and she goes, um, did those two aliens walk in here? And I was like, aliens? <laughs> I said, no, those are helmets. I said, it's a Star Wars. And she just goes, yeah, and then just left. And I was like, I got hey, a lady, you're lost. You're not cool. I've got a great story about that. So I was going to my my first ever um, comic convention I went to with a, with a friend of mine, and um, she was dressed like Kim Possible, and I had my Jedi my Jedi gear on. And we stopped beforehand, and we're getting, and like she's like, I want to go to Walmart. I got to use the bathroom. And I want to like get water and snacks and stuff. I was like, okay. So we get there, and she goes to, and like she's like, Are you fine walking in? I'm like, Yeah, I'm not gonna wear like my like big brown cloak. Cause it's hot, but I'll wear like just the tunic. I'm not gonna like change. Yeah. So I so we walk in there and we're walking around and you know people are like smiling and waving and I've got my like tunic and the lightsaber and all that. So all of a sudden I like stop by the bath. I go to the bathroom and I'm waiting for her outside and this little old lady comes up to me and she comes she comes walking up and she goes, "Excuse me, son. Uh, what's that you're wearing?" And I go, "Oh, this this you know like this is my clothes." And she goes, "Oh, well, why are you wearing it?" And I go. <laughs> Oh, I wear this all the time. And she goes, honey, don't mess with me. Why are you wearing that? And I go, oh, I'm going to a, I'm going to a comic convention. And she goes, well, what's that? I go, it's like a, like a nerd thing. And she goes, oh, well, you have fun now. And then she just walked away. I was like, all right. Not the encounter I was expecting. She would have been right. to turn around and go. <laughs> <laughs> I was absolutely like, are you in the church? <laughs> yeah. Um. Under the Helmet podcast is not condone condone the assault of old ladies. It's not okay. We do. No. No. Do better. We, I say that all. The, I say that all the time. Do better. Do better. Let go. Do, do better. better. <laughs> I say that all the time. I used to. Guys, like, we still don't have Commander Cody. Yes, you do. Lego. Yes, you do. No, it's not real. Oh my it gosh. It's not official. It he doesn't doesn't count. He's in the game, okay? He exists. No, he exists. Was, it was He's in the Dylan. game. That we got him. the Commander yeah. Cody. I know. Yeah. I'm I'm just saying, he exists. He's coming one day. That's going to be He's one of the most coveted the sets game. out there. I'm sorry. He's in the Lego Star Wars game. So yeah, but since exactly. like Slug dude, everybody does the meme about you think he's gonna get made. Claude? In- Claude. Claude. Live slug a- cam? Yes. Lego like Claude Lego win. Lego? Yes. Honestly. Claude is unbeatable. Exactly. Like also, it is, you know, it is 2022 now. When is Lego gonna release another gonk droid? 
They did. They did in the Bad Batch set. Really? Yeah. Here it is. Donkeys in the set. That's oh. Okay. Golf. Okay. I gotta. I gotta go buy them. <laughs> I gotta go buy the Marauder yes. then. I gotta go well, buy the Marauder. Discard the everything and else and just keep going. Uh-uh. 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 You can have I it back. To, I used to have the classic Gonk Droid. Well, I, it's somewhere. I think it's still up in my parents' attic, but. That's kind I of had the classic gong droid, which was, which was just the oven painted gray <laughs> with like a face on it. It's dope. Love that. I thing. remember, dude. I remember my first Lego Star Wars set was the 2005 Arc 170. Ooh. Remember, Ooh. I got it for my birthday, and I built it. And I remember now it's in a bin. It's in a Lego bin, the notorious Lego bin. Yep, notorious yeah. Lego bin. I've got one. My my Ooh. collection looks nice right now. Uh, yeah, there's a dude. lot in the bin. We had the our first was the um stormtrooper drop ship and then the like the rebel like speeder, like two kind of build Oh, the battle packs. Yeah, the battle packs that came yeah, out the battle, I remember the battle pack. Like, um, that's dope. That's yeah. Cool. I'm trying to remember what my first was, which was you know, because I was born '98. So okay. I kind of grew up in like the peak Lego age almost, where like when I was younger, I think I was like, I was probably like five or six where we had like, you know, it was like right around Attack of the Clones time. So we had the, like the yellow speeder. When are they going to make another one of those? Never. Instead of another land speed, Luke's land speeder. No. We need another, like we need more Attack of the Clones sets. No, we need another Luke's land speeder. Did you hear about the UCS Luke's land speeder that's coming out later this year? We had some thoughts about that. We the talked biggest about joke. that. Oh, we no, talked about that on our, on our show. Yeah. It we better like, be life size. <laughs> really? Like I better be able to get in and drive it to work. Or in that case, I don't want it. Mm, that's facts. <laughs> but no, the the display pieces look pretty cool. And one of the first sets I remember is um Yoda's hut on Dagobah. So I I probably oh, yeah. pick that one up. The Dagobah like training one that they have that's coming out. I like that one. That one's really cool. That one in the trash compact. Yeah, that looks like. sick. That's something I have dollars for it. You know, it's only it only. Yeah, I just I felt like those sets were a little pricey. They are they are super pricey. I kind of want to wait to get those on like sale if I could. Which is great is that you don't have to get them like right away. Gotta get them early to get the clout. But I'm really excited for though is that back printing on R two. R two back printing. Ooh, sheesh! It's gonna be really nice. That's gonna be nice. I'm excited for that I'm one. Very excited for that. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. So, do you collect anything other than Lego? I know you showed your, you showed your Neo Pixel, but yeah, other than that, so do you I like collect, have any other right, stuff other than Legos? Right now, I collect mostly Lego and then um, Black Series helmets and then lightsabers. Nice. I'm trying to think how many Black Series helmets I have right now. I have. <laughs> We have we have a subscriber goal. I can't remember how much it is. I think it's I think it's a hundred at a hundred subs. We're doing a like helmet collection reveal, so Ooh, I don't want to say how many cool. I have as to, as to spoil that one. But I want to say I have I think I have three Black Series helmets right now, and I've got some other ones. We have those. Like I've got a clone. Uh, I've got a clone helmet. I've got Rebel Pilot. Two Boba Fett's. Trying to think what else. I've got a I've got quite a few helmets. I've got my red hood helmet and then some other ones. I've got one that's like custom made for a um inquisitor cosplay that I put on like Ooh, twice. That's heavy dope. dope. It's cool. I love it, but the problem is it's so big and like oh uh, like it was already hard walking around a con and so so I, I did a Boba Fett cosplay and went to a convention and had a lot of fun was in like the showcase and everything. It was re- I felt really cool walking around with like the, you know, Boba Fett on, but so many people I felt like I was going to walk over the whole time. Oh, really? Because like people are like hyper focused on their own things. So when you're walking around and your whole like line of visibility is like this, it's like, oh, hey, yeah. I might see you, I might not. Thankfully, I didn't step on any kids. So mission accomplished on that one. That's their fault for being in hey, your way. 
Nice. I did have a few kids run up and want to take pictures though, and that was really cool because this oh, was right. Cool. I think it was like right after Book of Boba Fett wrapped. So like all the kids were like Boba Fett, and then there was one guy there dressed like the Mandalorian. So like we got like so many pictures together. I don't have any of them. I don't oh. even know what they got there. It it bites, but it was like you know it made some kids' day. So honestly, it was worth it. That's yeah. dope, dude. Absolutely. I do, my I do. I do a lot of cosplay stuff as well. So that's probably my like three biggest things is is like Lego, lightsabers, and cosplay. Those are probably my like three big things. If I do, if I were to do like say like I had an endless budget because I'm working on my Arc Trooper still. I just don't have a lot. I'm of time excited to see that. that. I'm excited for that. He's he's yeah. he's getting there. He's almost done. We're on the painting phase because we had to work a lot of stuff with the midsection because. Um, oh, yeah. I got it. Uh, we bought it like half finished off an individual uh, who has a, <coughs> excuse me, a very different body shape than mine. And then on top of that, when we started it, I was 40 pounds heavier than I am now. So my waist went. Shoo. So um, nice. Nice. I, uh, we had to mess around with the midsection a lot. And then we finally got that all wrapped up. So now we're just into the painting phase, going to get it all strung up and then uh, I'm hoping to have it done um, before the end of the summer because then the summertime I'll have a lot of free time on yeah. my hands. Um, but if I were to do like a couple others, I know Jacob and I would both want to do um, Sith Troopers. Mm -hmm. um, we would want to do, I'd want to do the Mud Trooper, or not the Mud Trooper, the Mimban Storm Trooper from Solo. Oh, nice. um, and then I really, really would want to do a Boba Fett from the Book of Boba Fett, which your costume, dude, for that looks amazing i have to Thank say you. yeah it looks I, fantastic i made it out of cardboard believe That's, it or not. It doesn't even look like it it looks so good yeah That's so awesome. it it was a so i basically that was a whole process it took me right around a month to build like That's so i went crazy. through and like i watched a bunch of videos and like found all the soft goods and everything like yeah. that and then i went and I, I went on the, what was it? The Mando Mercs website and I found their like armor templates and just printed those off. And I had to like, I was like running up to my office every day. Cause I'm a printer either. So like the, the office of my apartment complex, I was like, Hey, Hey, uh, front desk lady, can you, uh, you print this for me? Like, <laughs> so that was really funny. And, and then I'm very, you know, pleased that she didn't ask like, because she obviously saw what she was printing and she was like, she never asked, what am I making? And I'm like, Thank you for that. Don't ask. I don't want to explain it right now. I'm a man on a mission. There's, I have tunnel vision. I think it on what, been, what I want. Oh, yeah, here it is. It was on TikTok too, yeah. but I definitely saw it on Instagram. The video of you at the um, the con like the costume contest. It it looks really good, dude. Like, well, I thank you. Say. Yeah. And what what got yeah, me was it I think really, really good. I can't remember oh, like, I where it was. was. Somebody commented i can't remember if it was tiktok or instagram but they commented like you walk just like boba fett and i was like yeah shoot i didn't even notice yeah it's the lack my, of visibility you take bigger steps my dad always says that um because he's been in the 501st for like 15 years now and so he always tells me when you put the armor on everything about you changes like you hold yourself differently you walk differently um you like in a way, like a lot of times if people don't know it's you in the costume, even if you don't have like a helmet on, people wouldn't know that it's you because you you behave so differently when you have it all on. Um, oh, and absolutely. I, I can't wait to finish mine and just be able to walk around. It's so much. Coffee. It's so much fun. You're, you're definitely going to enjoy it. I actually ran into a coworker at the convention. Who oh, no way. And, and it was, it was really cool. Cause like we, we talked outside of like, we talked outside of the convention. So we kind of like knew we were both like into star Wars, but never like realized, like, I didn't tell him about the convention. He didn't tell me. And then like, I turned around cause like I had taken my helmet off. Cause it, like, we were like looking at pictures from like a friend of ours and like he, one of his kids was like, Oh, look, look, mom, it's Boba Fett. And I like turned around and like put the helmet on. I was like, Oh, you want to? And I, I tried doing I tried doing the voice too because you know I'm I'm method like you that. Want I was like, you want to do a picture? And, and and he was like, no. And then just walked away. <laughs> so I, I, was like, all right. I was like, all right, whatever. And then all of a sudden I make eye contact with him and we like stare at each other for a second. And he's like, Dylan. I'm like, dude, what's up? 
And he's like, that's so cool. Neat. And I'm like, yeah, I made this. So I'm not saying anything, but office Christmas party or Halloween party. I'm that's definitely sick. winning that costume contest. Not even over yeah, the base. Was, took a W. Yep. Um, Cause I did, I did yeah. Starlight Boba or Tython Boba. And then I want to do rearmored is next. Nice. That's the one that I would want to do. Is the rearmored? Yeah, yeah. Is the rearmored one? You know, but I don't like how it's all like scratched up. I liked it when it was like that pristine, clean armor. And yep, me too. Season two, it just looked so good. Yeah, that's more the Morak armor is probably my favorite too. That's the one that I would choose to do. Yes, that's what that's what I'm definitely gonna do because because the Black Series helmets already like it. I have everything I need right now to get started. I've got like the EVA foam. It's just been finding the time, finding the energy, and like trying to work with EVA foam is a whole like different process than like cardboard. Yeah. I um, used to do that too. I made a Titanfall costume out of EVA. It's it's not bad. I've I've heard it's not as bad as I'm making it out to be. And it's one of those things where like I used to never think to myself like, oh, I can do a Boba Fett costume. Like I could build this if I wanted to, because I've never considered myself to be like that like handy. But then like when I did it and I finished it, I finished it like right around midnight, the day of the convention, and like Ooh. I like call like my mom had called me for an unrelated reason, and I was like, mom, listen. Remember how I told you about that Boba Fett costume? She's like, yeah. I'm like, I just finished it. I'm wearing it all right now. And she's like, okay. And I'm like, it's so cool. And she's like, I'm happy for you. <laughs> and, and I know she's thinking to herself, end of my family line right there. What have I done? The family tree is pregnant. over. Thanks. Thanks, Papa. Ruined that one. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, hey, um, did you have any questions for us before we uh, wrap this up here? Yeah, so um, I, I would say probably biggest question I have for you guys is what Star Wars project are you most looking forward to besides Kenobi coming up, like upcoming? Bad um, Batch Season 2. Bad Batch. Ahsoka. Yes. I'm... I'm probably most excited for Mando season three. I'm excited for Bad Batch. I'm excited, okay. like yeah, yeah. beyond excited for Kenobi, but I'm really interested in where Mando season three is going to go. And part of part of the reason too is because for, with the Mandalorian, like that was something like my parents and I would sit down and watch together. Yeah. Like we would we would get together on Friday nights and talk about it and watch it because it was something that they enjoyed. And it, we used to do that same thing with the Clone Wars. So Mando has that special place in my heart where, like, I want to watch that, like, with my parents and, like, talk to my parents about it. And, like, when Book of Boba was coming out, I was telling them, like, okay, I'm watching this. I'll let you know if you need to watch it for, like, Mandalorian. And then when he showed up at, at the end of in episode five, I called my mom that week and I was like, hey, heads up. You got to watch this now. <laughs> and she was just like, why do I have to watch it? I'm like, don't, don't ask any more questions. You need to watch it to understand the Mandalorian coming out. I, and that's all I'm going to say. And she goes, okay. And they watched it right along like the same time I did after that. Cause they, I think they binge watched it, like caught up, they got wow. caught up to the episodes nice. and I was like, good for them. That is sick. Yeah. We just got echo from the bad batch and that just made me even more excited for it. That's such a cool figure. Like it is literally a goat. I have, I, I have, I have to say, um, I don't think I have the the space to collect black black series figures. Yeah, but you guys, I love your guys' passion for the black series figures. Like it's such a cool thing to see, and honestly, it really helped me get back into collecting and like telling oh, my that's parents, awesome like, hey, nice. I'm taking those Legos out the attic," and they're like, "Oh, we thought you were just gonna leave them." They're like, "No, no, no, no. I'm I'm taking those." What are you gonna do yes. with them? I'm gonna display them. It's yeah, right. you're passionate about them. It makes that's the podcast set look nicer. Yeah, <laughs> and that's I think that's awesome when people say things like that, especially like because just because and like I kind of mentioned earlier, growing up, like collecting was always a thing that I did, whether it was Star Wars or like 
um, trading cards or like other toys or anything like that. I was always collecting something. And I think that having Star Wars and having the community where you can talk to other people that collect is something that's really special. And I'm, and I'm glad that our like podcast has been able to do that for other people like mm-hmm. that. That's awesome. Absolutely. And that's, and that's, what's really cool about it too, is that, you know, I, I, w- I was very hesitant at first to like join the discord because like I was in a discord previously and it was just nonstop messages all the time. Oh, and really? I got tired of it and just uninstalled the app. And this was before you guys. So like the longest time I was like, okay, this is kind of like something. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to give it a try. I'll join for like a week and see how I like it. And I've been there ever since. I really enjoy it. And I enjoy the community. I enjoy the people. I've it's met cool. such cool people and like, whether it be us like sending memes back and forth or like, you know, like, Hey dude, come check this out. Or like, you know, it's cool to have that community of people to talk with, especially because like I've got friends in my life who are like star Wars fans, but yeah. they're not like, or like they'll watch star Wars, but they wouldn't call themselves like fans. Yeah. If right. That makes sense. And that actually leads me to my one other question. So I've been asking yeah. a lot of people this, what if you are gonna like have somebody rewatch the movies, just the movies, not any of the shows? What's the rewatch order you would recommend to them? People who've so, seen the movies and would like to do a rewatch. So usually, and then we'll do like, first time watcher. Usually, what I do is I make people go through like I start with the prequels, but as I've noticed, I showed my uh, my roommate Adi, and he's from India. He's never seen Star Wars. Um, he was a bit confused about some things that get explained in the ot that are just kind of like prevalent in the prequels so now I'm thinking if i'm making anybody watch i'm gonna make them watch four five six one two three seven eight nine that's how i do it i've only shown people at four five six well like the sections of the trilogies and whatnot i have actually done it the other way i've had multiple people right now my girlfriend and i are going through the movies and then before that um i remember my freshman year of college i had a friend of mine uh, go through the movies for the first time with me right when the Mandalorian was coming out. And uh, there are just certain like story points that hit so much harder in the original trilogy because you've seen the prequels. Is episode one kind of difficult to get people into Star Wars with? Yes. Admittedly, it's it's a lot easier to have them watch A New Hope first. But if you watch Sorry. it like... No, you're good. <laughs> if you watch it chronologically, like when Obi-Wan talks about Anakin and A New Hope, when they fight each other, when um, Vader tells Luke that he's his father, as the viewer, for the first time, you know all the way through A New Hope and all the way up until that point in Empire that Vader and Luke are father and son. And you're just like waiting to see what happens as the viewer. And like seeing that in other people is super cool. And especially with Obi-Wan too. Like seeing Obi-Wan's like... Um, him his almost like depression about the clone wars and about anakin and talking about him as a good friend um just really just it watching other people watch it for the first time and seeing them like actually get upset i mean like and even like just going through the movies um when we watched uh the force awakens two weeks ago like it went from going into the phantom menace where my girlfriend fell asleep in the middle of the movie And then now, like, she about cried when Han Solo died in The Force Awakens. So just to see, like, that transition from that first movie to the seventh movie was, like, for me, like, as a fan, that means everything. And, like, it it was the same way for my friend in freshman year of college. You know, he just wasn't really into it at first. You know, he wanted to watch the movies, though. That was the thing. There was a desire to watch them. Um and uh, by the end of it, he was he was hooked, you know. So I, I say one through nine, you know, four, five, six, one, two, three, seven, eight, nine. I get that, too. Um, but, yeah, it's always going to be confusing, too, in my opinion, showing somebody it for the first time, just because we've seen it so many times. Yeah. We understand the majority of what happens. So people will always ask questions. I feel like no matter what order you showed in. Yeah, right. Absolutely. And I remember pr- watching it with previous, you know, relationship partners where it was like. I think I started, I would start with showing episode four. Mm -hmm. And then last time, like the last time I like showed somebody any movie beyond four was, um, was, was my high school ex. And that was, you know, almost five years ago now, but it was right about the time force awakens was like out. So I was like, Oh, you know, 
and she was like, yeah, it was cool, but like not my favorite. I was like, let's let's watch one of the newer ones and, and let me know what you think. So I, so I had to watch Force Awakens, and she was like, that was a lot better. And I was like, you would not make it online, but <laughs> – you, you would not make it in the online discourse, but hey, I'm glad you liked it. Yeah, right. I, I had a friend who's, you know, who, who's, you know, married and looking to start a family soon. And she was asking me, like, what order should my kids start watching stuff? And I was like, Ooh. Clone Wars. <laughs> so that's the thing is, like, where do I, where, like, where do you start a kid with Star Wars? Prequels. Prequels. Start them from yeah. the beginning. Yeah, because then you have the silliness of Jar Jar, you have the pod racing scene. Uh, the prequels are a lot more captivating to a child nowadays because everything is so stimulating with all the, you know, the screens and the, and everything is so fast paced in life nowadays that for a child, I feel like the prequels are a lot more visually stimulating than the originals are. Um, you know, if you would have been a kid growing up like we did 20 years ago, then mm -hmm. that's different. You know, we still have an appreciation for older films um, because they weren't so old back then. But, you know, now we're going on uh, A New Hope is over 40 years old now. So, yeah, I mean, Attack of the Clones, what, just hit 20 this year? Yeah. And that's that still that holds up, you know? Yeah. And it's crazy to me to think that in a few years, like my favorite movie is going to be. You know, Revenge of the Sith is my favorite Star Wars movie. Yeah. Kind of jumping ahead, but Revenge of the Sith is my favorite. Well, actually, yeah. jump back and forth. But <laughs> just back and forth between Revenge of the Sith and Return of the Jedi. Like, Ooh. those two always fight it out for the top spot. Both good choices. Both are yeah. very good. But I think that that lets us uh, get into our, our lightning round here. Because yep. yep. we asked three Thank questions. You. And you already answered one. So that was okay. the favorite movie. Favorite Star Wars show. Favorite show. So I, I, I gotta say, I love I love them all. They're all probably I've yet to watch a Star Wars show that I didn't like. I've yet to see Resistance, so unless that one absolutely blows me out of the water, well, I'm gonna have to go with Clone Wars. Okay. Just because I have that attachment of sitting down with my family on Friday night on the Cartoon Network and watching Clone Wars. And like, yeah. It mean it was a thing that we did every Friday night. Like we would right. yeah. pop popcorn and like like you know put them in buckets. We had like a Clone Wars bucket that like we we had popcorn. My parents still have it to this day. And it was like it's got like I think the season three designs like you know Anakin, Obi Wan, Ahsoka, Rex, Cody like I like get such a cool thing. So Clone Wars is probably going to be my favorite, the one that I appreciate the most. Although mm -hmm. I found a new appreciation for Rebels recently, so it is good. Rebels is is a close second, and then probably Mando, and then Book of Boba. Yeah, but then favorite Star Wars character. Obi Wan. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Obi Wan is my Obi Wan is my all time. Obi Wan is my all time. Yeah, yeah. 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 Although close, close second and third is going to be tied for second is actually Kanan, Jarrus, and Cal Kestis. Those are probably my oh, okay. my two Very tied good. for second. And then third is going to be Luke. That's yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. And my 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 rankings shift all the time. So if you Same. ask me like, two mm -hmm. weeks from now, it's going to be completely different. It just really depends on the mood, but like if I had to go for all time, those would probably those would probably probably be my like all time. Yeah, sweet dude. Well, this has been another episode of our Have a Chat series. Thank you to Dylan representing Under the Helmet Podcast for joining us on this week's Have a Chat episode. Now we Thank always you for give. Me. Of course, we always give our guests a little bit of a shout out on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube or on Spotify, you'll be able to see this right now. Bam! What? Look at it. It's under the helmet podcast. Guys. And here they go. They have all kinds of great content. They have awesome podcast episodes on all topics. As you heard at the beginning, not just Star Wars. If you like DC, if you like Lego, if you like Marvel, they got all kinds of stuff. And you see this number right here. You see this 29. When this episode airs, I better go and get on Google at the end of the night when this episode airs, I better see this number higher than 29. Okay. Okay. This number better be higher. Or I'm going to riot. I'm going to riot. Absolutely. But, thank you so yes. much for having, thank you so much for having me. So again, just a, just a quick shout out to our next episode. So tomorrow night we are having yeah. somebody 
who's been on the Galactic Star Cruiser and has had the experience. And I got in touch with him. We we met. Uh, he was one of the guys on Lightsaber Radio, on their like big cosplay show. Oh place. yeah. Yeah. So I, I spoke with him, like we, we kind of met through that, and I saw him on the Star Cruiser, and I was like swiping up on his story, like, dude, that's so cool. I'm so jealous. So like tomorrow night we're talking to him, which is gonna be for those it's gonna be Tuesday the 12th of March, oh, 2022. So if you're watching this in the future, that episode will be up. So definitely sweet. come watch it. Come join us live. We go live Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8 30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on our youtube channel we would like to go live on other platforms but we're just trying to build slowly once we get a little bit bigger we'll start branching out a little bit more that's right about when i get out of work so i'll, I'll try to tune in if i can all right so, uh, already. everybody thank you again for watching another episode of the podcast jacob take us out with the spiel ah ha ha if you like this episode, be sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and don't be afraid to leave a comment in the comment section below. Uh -huh. You can also follow us on Twitter, TikTok, and follow us. And on Instagram, uh -huh. all the links are going to be on the link tree on the description and in, in yeah, below. And if you want to be a super cool guy, make sure I have you joining that Discord. Tons of fun in the Discord all the time. Uh -huh. Thank you all very much for watching this episode of the 1313 Podcast. And we will see you another day. Bye. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.